Good morning on this Thursday, August 2nd, 2012, and this is the latest on Tropical Depression 5. As of the 8 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center, it is still packing only 35 mile per hour sustained winds, so it has still not intensified to Tropical Storm Ernesto, but Tropical Storm watches are still in effect across the Lesser Antilles in anticipation of TD5 strengthening as it crosses the island chain. Now, one big difference in the five day forecast is that unlike yesterday, it's not showing a hurricane here near Jamaica. But if you look closely at the discussion itself, they are still forecasting the winds to increase to near category one intensity with 70 mile per hour sustained winds by 2 a.m. Tuesday. The latest spaghetti model plot continues to show that this is going to end up being a West Caribbean storm. So it is looking less and less likely that this system will move into the Bahamas or even South Florida for that matter. But all interest in the West Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico will have to continue paying attention to Tropical Depression 5 as it continues to move west over the next few days. As we begin our satellite tour, you can see that Tropical Depression 5 is swirling about here to the southeast of Barbados. And upon closer inspection, you can tell that the system is still widely disorganized. In fact, the main center of circulation is still along the northwest quadrant of all of the convection which is displaced to the south and southwest of the center. And this is good news because even if this system were to develop into Ernesto shortly before reaching the Lesser Antilles, at this point it's not going to be much more than a very minimal tropical storm. So the main threats will be just a lot of heavy rainfall and isolated strong wind gusts, but nothing overly significant. And as we turn to the enhanced infrared, you can see especially here that all of the convection is displaced just to the south of the center and in fact there's even a second area uh, mid-level rotation and you can see this as we go back to the visible satellite and as long as this remains rather drawn out here it's going to take several more days for this depression to organize not to mention the vertical westerly wind shear that is still in place so short-term prospects for this system are not very good and as we return to a more regional perspective, it does not look as though conditions will be very conducive for further development for at least another two to three days as we've got this mid-level trough extending into the eastern Caribbean, not to mention the dry air that you see in those dark black and orange colors. So this is going to be a system to watch more so for the long-term potential because even if it did weaken down to nothing more than a tropical wave axis in the East Caribbean, if this tropical wave were to move more so into the West Caribbean under a very favorable upper level ridge in the five to seven day forecast period, then that in itself would be enough cause for concern. So the main point that I'm trying to drive here is that regardless if, if it's just a tropical wave or a tropical depression or barely a minimal tropical storm, it could still be moving into a favorable environment so we're going to be watching this for the next several days at the very least. Before diving into the latest forecast model guidance, here are just a few charts from the University of Wisconsin and the low level vorticity also confirms what we were seeing on the visible satellite animation with this second low to mid-level vorticity max here just to the southwest of the primary center of Tropical Depression 5 and much of this is probably going to begin moving north and then try to congeal with the system itself but again it's going to take several days for this to really begin to concentrate and organize and the zonal westerly flow just to the north will not be helping the system whatsoever. So in terms of model guidance we are going to begin the rundown with the 0z run of the CMC model and the first map we are looking at is the 850 millibar relative vorticity and also you can see that the model has initialized the main vorticity max associated with TD5 but also the second vorticity max just to the southwest. And as we said, both of these are going to try to merge together, but it's going to be a very slow process. But overall, that second vorticity max down toward the south could actually help in keeping the system on a more westerly track for a more prolonged period. But as we go beyond 60 hours, the CMC model, for whatever reason, is still wanting to have the tendency to take the system to the north of Cuba. Now with each run it's starting to do so later and later and what I mean by that is it's moving more westerly with time but even here the latest forecast six days into the future is trying to take the system into the Florida Straits. Overall there are two main forecast track scenarios and first I should say that it seems like if Tropical Depression 5 degenerates into an open wave axis or remains nothing more than a tropical depression throughout the forecast period 
It seems like that's going to make it rather difficult for any mid-latitude troughs to pick the system up, so therefore it would stay on a more westerly track towards Central America. But if what some of the models are showing begins to verify, and what I'm more specifically talking about is improving conditions in the Northwest Caribbean, then we could be dealing with something more than just a tropical depression. And if that's the case, then we will have to be monitoring the guidance and see if they're showing any troughs diving into the eastern United States. So, although I think the CMC is still having the tendency to want to draw the system to the north too quickly, it's still important to at least analyze the 500 millibar steering pattern. And you can see the reason why the CMC at least is trying to take this into the southeast gulf, because by day six we still have a weak trough that is dangling across the southeast United States. Now, if we've got a more powerful tropical storm or hurricane near the Isle of the Youth or Yucatan Channel, then of course there is that chance that it tries to get drawn up toward the north, toward the United States southeast coastline. So the main two scenarios so far is a track more towards Central America or maybe perhaps a very gradual turn at least into the Central Gulf and then thereafter it's almost anyone's guess. The next model that we are going to take a close look at is the GFS and this is the 6Z run and as you can see with the 850 millibar vorticity all of the models are now beginning to latch on to this second vorticity maximum located just to the southwest. But as long as they're initializing it correctly, that's a good sign, at, le at least for the model verification. And you can see that the system becomes more disorganized in the Central Caribbean before we see a more robust intensification into the Northwest Caribbean and Southeast Gulf of Mexico. And also notice here between days 5 and 7, as it begins to move through the Isle of the Youth, much like what we saw with the CMC, the GFS is at least alluding to the possibility of a more northerly turn at the final end of its run. We also see similar synoptic agreement between the CMC and GFS models in the mid-level 500 millibar steering layer because as we set this into motion on the GFS, we see a trough sweeping across the eastern United States within the next four to seven days and finally by the end of the run, by day seven, we still have this stalled out trough over the central Gulf Coast and if that trough lingers just enough and our tropical cyclone is just strong enough then the two put together would create more of a northerly track toward the Gulf Coast of the United States. Having said all of this, the latest zero Z run of the ECMWF is still showing the completely alternate scenario and first off you can see that it keeps the system relatively weak throughout the next few days in fact as it begins to move into the eastern Caribbean by Friday night the European appears to be showing nothing more than a very strong but open tropical wave axis and this remains generally the case as the tropical wave continues to move westward and then being located somewhere near Jamaica late Sunday night into Monday morning and by day six it's really hard to make out on the sea level pressure forecast but it's located somewhere between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula and here we are by day seven now Although we're seeing some disagreement with the forecast track, we are seeing synoptic agreement, and that is we've got this slight weakness in the mid-level steering ridge over the southeast United States. Now, if the system remains weak, and we're talking about nothing more than a tropical depression or tropical storm, it's going to have a hard time feeling this weakness, and the low to mid-level ridging should be enough to still push this toward the west, toward Mexico, or possibly even southern Texas, and that is exactly what the European is showing as we go into days 8 through 10. Finally by day 10 you've got this very weak area of low pressure that is moving into extreme south Texas between Brownsville and Corpus Christi so there's a lot of question marks that still need to be answered and no one can tell you with any confidence what exactly is going to happen beyond the next three or four days but there are certainly no guarantees that anyone will not be impacted here along the Gulf Coast so everyone in this region of the globe needs to continue to be paying attention to the tropics for at least the next week or so. So that sums up your update for this Thursday and one thing I would just like to say is I apologize for having the raspy voice this morning because I am battling a bit of a sinus cold but I know that this is an important weather topic that our guests want to be informed about so the video updates will continue and we will have at least another discussion posted on 28storms.com sometime this afternoon and if it looks like things have gotten interesting enough on the models, we will post a second video update either sometime later this afternoon or later this evening. So keep it tuned to the website and the Hurricane Tracker app for more details on Tropical Depression 5.